In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, UV wrapping, and that's putting a material on a model that we have that's not necessarily a flat material or something that needs to wrap around something. So in this case, we're going to use this Lego head. It's a model that a student did. And we're going to wrap a face around this. So I've already opened it up, got it set up. I've already selected our head. I'm going to come up here to our Modify menu. We're going to go to U Unwrap UVW. And we're going to select our polygons. And before we do the rest of that, I'm going to go ahead and select everything else on this guy. And we're going to freeze it. So we'll see. The head is named this a chamfer box. So everything else on here should be things that we need to freeze. Alright. So now we're going to select the polygon. Zoom in a little bit. And we're going to select everything on the this head. Making sure that we get all of the polygons. Alright, we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about this top piece of the head because we're not gonna do anything with that. So now we want to select Open UV Editor. That's going to open up this window. We want to go to Mapping, Flatten Map. And we'll keep the default settings here. And now if you'll notice that we've got all of these shapes. Well, all these shapes correspond with where these green lines go. So now if you'll notice, we'll select this front of the face here and this turned red. So this is going to be the front of our head. So now what we want to do is we want to come up to our tools and we want to do a render UVW template and under the mode we'll select solid and render and basically this is the picture of all of our maps. So we want to save it So we'll save. It. So we'll save it right here. And we want to save it as a JPEG. And then we're going to move over to Photoshop and I will open that back up and be right back. All right, now that we got it pulled into Photoshop, we're going to make a couple of adjustments. We're going to unlock our our layer. I'm going to set this to black and white. And we're going to get our magic wand tool. And we're going to select all of our background black here. And we're going to right click. And we're going to select the inverse, which is going to select everything that is our maps. And we're going to delete that. So we have transparent, basically a mask here. Now at this point what I want to do is I want to select a color that's going to be close to the Lego head and you'll want to be exact with this but for this tutorial I'm just going to select something that I think it's close. I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to drop that down below and on that layer I'm actually going to paint the entire layer. So I want to deselect everything and now I can start painting on it. Now remember when we were back in 3D Max we selected the front of the face and it showed us where that was. So that's the, the square that it was so it's going to go this way. 
So in my mouth it's going to be here. My eyes will be here, so it's upside down. So we want to remember that when we're drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in some real quick items into the face here, and I'll be right back. Alright, I got a really goofy looking face on here, so we'll, I've saved it already, and we'll reapply this. So I'm going to go back over to 3D Max. I'm going to come over here and do my checkerboard pattern. I'm going to go pick texture, bitmap. And I'll go to the folder where I saved it, and I'll be right back. Alright, I got it right here. We'll click on it, click open, and then we'll need to go to our material editor. And in our material editor, we'll go under maps, we'll go under diffuse color. Under bitmap, show it. And the last thing we need to do is drag it down, and there's our face. Now at this point, we can go back into Photoshop, and we can adjust these layers. So I've, I've set my my eye and my smile on these two layers right here. So we can come up here and adjust some of our coloration, whatever you want to do there. And you just hit File, Save As, and we'll save it as the JPEG again. Save it as the same file name. And when we come back over to 3D Max, you can see it changed it in real time. 